time for the only podcast on earth with two Major League Baseball All-Stars, Jason Kindle, Dimitri Young, who is here. What's up, Dimitri? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Doing good. One four-time Stanley Cup champion, Darren McCarty. One <laughs> man, the myth, the legend, the rock, rancid man, Lars Fredrickson. <laughs> Rock rancid man. That's the best. Rock rancid man. <laughs> oh, we got fucking, we got fucking Willie Mac on here tonight, which we're all very excited about, Dennis. And you're calling me Rock rancid man. Hey, look, <laughs> I, each week I'm trying to craft something for you. Okay, let let, let me work it out as we okay, go. Well, then I'll tell you what. Go back to the drawing board. I will. No large. Know that one. <laughs> then you're going to start. <laughs> the Canadian destroyer himself, P.D. Williams. Yeah. How's she going, eh? And the best producer in the business, Dennis. Stop. Stop. Yeah. Guys, Dimitri, I want to give this honor to you because you've been compared to this man so many times by Matt Stryker. Honor's yours. Oh, man. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Our guest tonight is none other. Than the NW former NWA national heavyweight champion, the former Impact X Division champion, none other than my little brother, <laughs> Chocolate Thunder Matt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on there, Willie. Representing South Central in the house. Yes, All sir. my wrestling fans and music fans and sports fans, we're gonna have some fun. That's right. Willie, I got to tell you, uh, this is the second time Petey and I have gotten to sat down and talk to you. The rest of these guys are going to find out how amazing you are. I, Lars and Dimitri are probably your two biggest fans. And each week, we you your name comes up on the podcast. And to watch these two guys light up when they found out you were coming on, Lars even, you know, moved some stuff around in his schedule to make sure he was here, which we're very thankful that you are here, Lars. So, guys, let's let's start with the questions. I want to start this off with you are one of the few guys that grew up a super duper wrestling fan. I mean, I remember a story you were telling us that You've you've been seeing PD Russell many different times. He came up and was like, "Oh yeah, what show were you on with me?" And you're like, "No, I was in the front row." You go from front row to shows to being in the ring. Was that kind of a, a an adjustment where there's a code that you have to act cool and not mark out when you see these guys? And here you are going from waiting by the park cars to get autographs to now being in the back room with these guys. Well, it wasn't really an adjustment for me. I didn't really give a damn because it's like, hey, it's Petey fucking Williams. I'm going to go up in there and say what's up to him. And now I'm in the locker room with him. It's like, I still got that kid in me because I'm always had it to the day I die. But then, you know, when it's time to go to business, you like, got to suck this in, do this match real quick. After that, man, that shit was fucking dope. Hell yeah, I wrestled Petey Williams, dog. <laughs> you know what, Willie? I was thinking the exact same thing. I remember... Uh, when we finally like shared a locker room, do you remember what it was? It was House of Hardcore. Also, Tommy, me, yep. you, and uh, I think uh, Matt Cross, right? M Dog. Me, you, and yeah, M Dog. Yeah, and hell of a match. And I, I, I remember seeing you, and I, I didn't know much about you. All right, so this, this leads me to my question. So I, I look at you. You're a big dude. You know, you're not typical like cruiserweight. You know, like small guy. You're a big dude. So. How did you start figuring out, like, hey, I want to be, like, a cruiserweight and, like, do that style? Like, how did you figure all that kind of stuff out? Well, shit, it started off being a fan. You look at the big dudes go up in there, they think you're going to be slow and clunky, but I'm looking at Rey Mysterios and Psychosis and shit like that, and I'm like, huh, I know I'm big. I wonder, could I pull it off? So... I did some flips, ran around, and I was like, all right, I'm going to put this in my repertoire, and here we are today. So who is, like, an, an inspiration for you, like, of a big man? Like, okay, so I'll tell you. A guy that wasn't the typical cruiserweight size that I saw first doing, like, flips and stuff was Ruckus. You know Ruckus from CZW? Oh, hell yeah. All right. So, I mean, who, who was your inspiration of, like, hey, I, I could do this kind of stuff? Oh, 
Ruckus was one and two cold Scorpio. Yeah, that's too cool, man. That's one dude I wanted wow. to wrestle. And I'm like, damn, he up here doing all this crazy stuff way before it was like popular in the US. And I'm like, huh, I want to be like that. Hey, hey, Willie, I, I've been watching you since you was on Lucha Underground, but I want to get into what you were into before because I was looking at some of your stuff. You had matched with Keith Lee who's doing, he's a big guy like yourself doing all that stuff. Yeah. I just want to know about, you know, what got you into wrestling outside of the fan, being a fan and stuff. Did you play football or anything? Where'd your athleticism come from? Mom, pops, a relative? I'm black, so I'm gifted. <laughs> I can but, relate. I, I can but, relate. <laughs> but besides that, yeah, I was like an active fat kid, so I played football, baseball, volleyball, ran track and field, and all the other good shit. And I'm like, once I got to college, because I never played like sports in high school, I said, forget it. I went straight to college and did that thing and learned how to work out and what I was supposed to do. But then I got into wrestling. I'm like, you know what? Fuck working out. I'm just going there and see what happened. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause they be like, Willie, you don't work out. I'm like, no, I knew it. You bastard. I'm like, it ain't my fault. It just really, happens. Willie? You're not on the gas, man. I'm 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 shocked, right? <laughs> nah. That ain't for me. One of the things, you know, when I first uh, saw you and was made aware of you, I think is when I, I, was, I was on a pro wrestling gorilla DVD. And I think it was a match with you and Kevin Steen. Is that correct? Yeah, I wrestled that fool twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember, you know, seeing you back then. And, you know, you guys have sort of similar bodies and you also move a lot alike in some ways. I think you're a little bit more agile. I'll give you that because you're here and he's not. But um, uh, what? But one of the things, like I wanted to kind of go back to what PD was saying. It's 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 when you when you when you in your mind when you do these moves and, and you're thinking about becoming like sort of a more of a high flyer kind of thing. Is it a mental thing to kind of get over for yourself, or is it more of just like you know shooting holler shit? Mm, I'll just go with the flow because it's like. Can I do this backflip still? Let me try it out. Oop, oh, there it is. All right, I guess I'm using it and shit like that. Because it's like, you never know when you're going to get that chance to try to do it again. If I fuck up, I fuck up. But if I pull it off, great gifts. <laughs> Point, Willie. I know, I think you mentioned it is your speed, like when you go corner to corner for a big man, it, it, it literally like, is like watching somebody running a four two or four three forty. It's like from me because you're so big, but you, that makes sense, Ray Mysterio. How about yourself? Because you have so many moves, bro. Do you have a favorite when you get on the top rope that like you're like hoping that the whoever you're wrestling with is as up to your caliber to be able to pull off these moves? Do you have a favorite either on the top or? You know, one of the Chocolate Thunders, is it better to get bombed or driven? That's all oh. I got to know. Bombed? Well, maybe, actually, all my shit's pretty good, but I like the six-star frog splash. I call it the six-star because it's one star better than RVD's old ass. He cool, though, but that's still the <laughs> yeah. I love it, dude. See, I, lo I, th I think that as a wrestling fan, to, to know what you love to do and the fact that you're pulling because you're just in there and you, like you said, you can wrestle everybody. And is it easier wrestling a bigger guy or a smaller guy, or does it just depend on the the talent and more reps you have or um, guys you fought? Cause I've been watching you fight John Morrison and Brian Cage and, you know, one's athletic, more of a flyer. One's just a, more of a monster like yourself, but, it's just, you know, such great matches. What's the mm -hmm. key? What's the key? Uh, adaptability, because, you know, John Morrison, he going to run around. The smaller dudes going to run around, want to do all this flippy shit. Brian Cage, Keith Lee, they want to do, like, some power stuff. So it's like, all right, you go in, you just got to be like putty and be like, all right, when I'm going to mow with this today, be like, all right, we're going to do power shit and a little bit of speed. 
And that's how I go with it in my mind. I don't try to overthink too much. It, listening to other wrestlers and interviews and the people we've had on the show, I've I've come to find that there's a difference between the guy who has trained you and the guy who has taught you the psychology of wrestling. And I'm more interested to find out who taught you the psychology of wrestling because when I see a Willie Mack match, it is one of the most – there's no wasted movement in a Willie yeah. Mac match. That's one of those you see wrestlers and they go out there and, and you go, why is he doing this? Why is he doing that? But when I watch a Willie Mac match, it all makes sense. Every move, a finger wag, a step, it, it's it's all meant something. Who taught you that aspect of wrestling? Actually, I learned that shit on my own from watching wrestling and from real life situations because it's like, if I'm getting punched, you know how a punch really feels. So it's like, fuck, okay. Like some people will go through the match and forget about what happened earlier. But like you see me step, like if somebody was messing with my leg, I'll take that step, go to pick them up. You see me shake it a little bit. It's like, fuck. So they realize, oh, that pain's still there from what happened earlier. It's like little shit like that makes a difference because I want to keep the realism in it. Yeah, that psychology that you bring is 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 definitely noticeable, you know, in into the ring. Now, do you find it a little bit different now with the psycho psychological aspect of wrestling that you're basically wrestling in front of no with no fans? I mean, in the in the arena. I mean, is it a little bit harder, or are you just kind of just doing the same kind of stuff, or do you think about it? Is what I'm asking. No, not really, because when I was trained. Like, once I got into fucking TV wrestling, they teach you it's not about the fans in the arena you wrestling for, so the people at home on TV. So I'm keeping that in the back of my head, be like, all right, I know it's four or five cameras around me. I got to find each and every one of those at some point and let them know, fuck, this is what's happening. Mm. Wow. Hey, hey, Willie, I wanted to know about your relationship with Rich Swan. We had him on. And it, and because we talked to him, I was begging that we get to talk to you as well. So, I mean, he had nothing but great things to say about you. Well, relationship with me and Will Swan is, we homies, we down for life because we came up in the same situation. Like he was an orphan and I was in the foster care system since I was three months old and got emancipated at 18. So, we was going through the struggle, but we had the one thing in common we love was pro wrestling. And I met him way back like 2010 at a PWG show. He just came from Japan because he like something happened where like he couldn't make the show in LA and he was just hanging around. And I walked up into him like, hey, you rich one? Like, yeah, man, how you doing? And we just <laughs> chopped it up until like it was time to do the show. And we hung out after and we've been friends ever since. It shows when we watch Impact, and, I mean, it's a beautiful thing to see. Yeah, I know it's tough. Everybody like, oh, Willie Mack going to turn on Rich Swan. Why we can't just be homies? I'm not like that. That happens all the time in all kind of wrestling companies. <laughs> like, let us be. Yeah. Don't you know what? <laughs> That's exactly what we talked about, too, is we hope that they don't, you know, if y'all have a match against each other, it's just a friendly yeah, we had one before. Like, he was my first singles match in Impact after Bound for Glory 2018. And I'm like, hey, we're going to go in there and do this thing. And it ain't going to be no hard feelings after. We're just going out there showing these people what they missing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, Willie. Um, so, go, okay, I want to go back to the first time I met you. Um, so, I, I was I, – I see you, you know, and – sometimes you judge a book by its cover right okay and i'm like i'm like okay i don't know this guy i never wrestled this guy i heard you're good um and we were with m dog mm. and i said you know and we're calling the match and you know your facial expressions in the ring and stuff are phenomenal okay but you're also doing them backstage too and i'm sitting there like matt is he is he getting all this he's like oh yep he's straight he's good and i didn't believe um that one bit so have you ever have you ever met somebody for the first time okay maybe haven't seen you wrestle or know what you're capable of or anything kind of like me and they kind of second guessed you and then uh has that been a like an issue before and then secondly after the match have they ever been like 
man, if I would have known you could have did all that, I would have done it with you. Like that kind of thing. Yep. Okay. Way <laughs> like 2007, I wrestled Brent Albright. Oh, it yeah, was yeah. for the NWA Showcase Classic or some shit like that. And he caught the match and did his thing and we was doing some shit. And it was just like the TV tapers. I had another match later and I went out there and busted out my shit. He was like, man, if I knew you could do all that shit, we'd have put it in the match. I'm like, hey, you don't want to tell me what to do. So I'm like, fuck it. You've been in the business longer than me, so I'm going to let you go ahead and steer the boat. You the captain. I am the captain now. That's how it was. That's what you get. <laughs> that's good. That's, that's very respectful on your part, though. But I mean, hey. sometimes you just got to be like, you know, and I hate that, Willie. Like, I'll ask the question in a second, but I hate that because, you know, I would wrestle like, you know, big names and stuff like that. And they wouldn't want to do anything. It's like, oh, I just want to collect mm-hmm. a paycheck or anything like that. Who is like the, the first like name you've ever wrestled? Mm-hmm. I guess it'll be Brent Albright. It but was. then after that, I wrestled Christopher Daniels. Oh, it was fun wow. as fuck. Doctor can go still. Oh, yeah. Man. <laughs> He's like 100 years old and he can still go. All right. Yep. Well, you I mean you've been in the tag team, obviously division, uh, for a lot of your career, and also the singles, and and, and I know it's two different mentalities, but I'm, I'm a tag team guy. That's like my favorite kind of wrestling, and uh, I love seeing you know just the the dynamic between the partners and and the chemistry. And mm-hmm. uh, what did what do you? Do you, do you prefer one or the other? And I know it's two different kinds of thought and all that, And but do you prefer one or, or the other? Well, when everybody come up saying you're going to be a wrestler, everybody want to get that singles push, but then you get the tag team part, you be like, damn, that's pretty cool too because you get the rest more than you do in a singles match <laughs> when people don't realize. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I ain't with this tag team stuff. I'm like, oh, uh, is it time for that comeback yet, dog? Go ahead, tag. <laughs> <laughs> I think that Willie, uh, one of the things talking about culture and, and with, I guess they say the forbidden door or whatever, but a lot of us here, like me, Petey, and Dennis watch Talking Shop of Mania 1 and 2 and stuff like that. Can you talk about that experience because as the wrestling fans who love storylines and see that not only who who are boys but like what it's all about you know to get it we absolutely love it can you talk about doing that hey that shit was fun i like just going in going in the doc's house and getting a little covid test and all that gimmick done and just hanging around chilling with the homies and all right, you got this match tonight. Are you doing this spot? I'm like, all right, cool. And then just to sit back and watch everything come together, it's just a bunch of big dudes just having fun. And that's what wrestling's supposed to be all about. Like, storylines is cool, but, like, sometimes you just need some fun in your life, especially in these fucked-up-ass times we got going. Can I get- for, did it come out for us as fun as it was to make for you guys? Yeah. I guess even better because we had to sit through the whole thing. Yeah. And y'all just got the chopped and screwed version just straight out there. We was up there <laughs> straight up in the diggity with bugs and shit flying around. <laughs> I'm hearing weird, weird ass noises sound like sprinklers, but I wasn't. Uh, it was some cicada bugs. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That motherfucker, like, sh- I was like, oh, I guess it's time to go back inside the house. No, we got time for that. No, I'm from South Central. I ain't never heard no damn cicada before, <laughs> except on the movie. Can, uh, can we take this back a, a little bit and make it a little heavy? Because you had mentioned kind of growing up how hard it is. And being in the wrestling in- industry isn't the easiest way. Do you feel like that built up fortitude for you to be successful in the wrestling industry? Yeah, probably, because I went through a lot of shit coming up going through foster care because, like, the way I got into it when I was three months old, my mom was on some drugs, and fucking she set the house on fire, and that's why my hand, I got burnt here, somewhere on my face, on my arm, on my leg. And I, the only person I knew as my mom was my foster mom, and she had me up until July 3rd, 2000. 
and she passed 2001 she passed away on me when I was 14 so I had to go through a lot of shit I moved in with her sister they didn't treat me right they fucking put me back in the system and I was at this other place where they had alarms on the refrigerators and like motion sensors and shit so I'm up in the top bunk and I turn over I hear go beep 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 and I'm stuck with all these kids I don't know still in my shit but I'm like all right it's all right it's I got to get through this and was waiting for Monday and Friday to come around because that's when we had Monday Night Raw and SmackDown to pass the time and TNA on Wednesday so I'm like all right I could get away from these people so it's like if I could get through all that shit wrestling ain't nothing to me because I've been through it my whole damn life. Yeah. Wow, this is this is real in, uh, inspirational right here. You know, I'm a high school baseball coach now, and listening to your st- story, your upbringing, and how successful you become, you know, I mean, you are inspiration, especially for the black race, but for all really anybody that has that struggle, you know, you you sh- you show how to persevere. And that's why you're a successful wrestler now. How does that play into, I'm not even going to call it a character because you're the exact same guy that I see on TV that, <laughs> that, that we're talking to right now. It's just like, yeah. you just, you're just not using profanity on television. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I wish I could so people could see the real me. They go, oh, Willie Mac can't cut no promo because they hold me back. I can't see my shit. <laughs> 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 come on, Petey. Come on, Petey. <laughs> come on, they can bleep me out. We got some good ass producers and editors and shit in the office. I've seen them. I know them. <laughs> Willie, I give you the authority and the blessing <laughs> oh. on TV. So go ahead. Yes. Just, They're first. just gonna say cut, do it again, but don't swear. <laughs> I, mean, like, I know. I know. I hate it. <laughs> hey, so like, Willie, what's it like to produce like a Willie though? Like from you, from your aspect, because you've been on both wrestling him, but also too, because yeah. obviously it sounds to me like it's like a lot easier, pretty, you know what to do. Like you were explaining before about being an agent, but also producing. When you got a guy like Willie, it seems like it writes its own. Yeah, it, no, own it, it really does. He's whenever I have a, a like a Willie Mac match on my, uh, you know, on my on my run sheet. Uh, I'm like, oh, sweet. Like, cause like, I know, I know Willie, I, he knows where the cameras are. Like he knows his, his gimmick. He knows what he's doing. I know he's going to have great facial expressions. I know he's going to hit all his, you know, stuff that he does. He does it the right way. I don't have to, you just don't have to worry when Willie's in the ring. And that's probably why, like, you know, like after a short time with the company, they put him as X division champion right away. I mean, like that, that's somebody that you want that, you know, can rely on having a good match all the time, knows what he's doing out there. Um, and that's good. But Hey, X division championship, one time X division champion. I'm super pissed that I wasn't there in 2020 when he won it, because I was a, like a huge advocate of yours. And like, even when you first came in, I think it was, wasn't your debut, like a bound for glory of like, yeah, with like, you and was it Rich against Ethan Page and and Matt Seidel and Matt Seidel? That's right. And I got to yep. produce that match. It was awesome. Like another treat that I got to produce. But fast forward, it, it was probably like mid twenty twenty, and they said they 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 gave you the X Division title. You won the X Division title. Did they tell you beforehand? I know how mine went, so I just always wonder how, you know, how how they tell you and give you the heads up. Did you just show up one day and like, hey? You're winning the X title today. Pretty much, like, pretty much right up until my fucking match was about to happen. I didn't know what the hell was going on. You get these emails like, all right, we building up towards you and Ace. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to go up in there and do my best to see what the hell happened. And they're like, all right, Willie Mac up. I'm like, the fuck? I'm like, you go like shit. This? You go, pretty much. I'm up, right? Uh, is this a non-title match, right? That, that's what I thought, too. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, Willie Mac up. I'm like, all right, wait, this for the title. Oh, shit, they about to, all right, let's see what they about to do. <laughs> okay. On that note, though, your first night with the title, you hear all these stories. Did you did you treat it special? Did you, you know, did you sit and look at it at home? The, the, the quiet moments, you know, 
you're sitting here with a guy who's won the Stanley Cup four times. You know, everybody here on the show has been accomplished. You're an X Division champion. When you get the belt, you're all alone. This is where you want to be. You work for your family life. What was those moments like? Well, it was fucking sweet. Well, it kind of sucked at first because, like, I heard the one, two, three. I'm celebrating like, fuck you. Yeah. I looked at the belt. But then I'm looking to the crowd to get like some inspiration, some energy. I'm looking, I'm seeing David Penzer up there like this. I see Ingrid with the gear and I see the fucking referee though, and the camera folks. I'm like, damn, nobody cheering worth the damn. Well, they're going to be doing it at home. Yeah, yeah. And as soon as I got back to the hotel room, I took pictures. I looked at it. I'm like, damn, Petey had this. AJ had this. Joe had this. Daniels had this. Kurt had it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, fuck. And I'm on the list with all of those people. I went from watching this shit on TV, paying 12 bucks for the Wednesday night pay-per-views, and like, I'm up here as the X Division champion. I'm like, damn, I guess I did something right in life. <laughs> Was it the same as the NWA championship, that same feeling for you? <laughs> Yeah, because it was the NWA, and you're thinking like, oh, hell no, my black ass ain't going to get over there. And Nashville Fairgrounds went up in there. All them folks, once they heard that three count, they were like, fuck yeah, Willie Mack that did it. I told you he was going to do it. They were shaking each other and shit. And I'm like, damn, all these country-ass white folks like my black ass? Fuck <laughs> I'm like, damn, I didn't think they was going to give a fucking two shakes of a rat's ass about me. <laughs> but there we go. Nice. Well, you know, one of the, one, my favorite match at this last pay per view was the 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 triple threat revolver match. Mm -hmm. I, lo I love the whole concept of that. I think I was texting with Petey going, "This is amazing," you know, because there's so many things that you can do. And I mean, obviously, you know, I was I was a little bummed out because you know, number one, your trunk your trunk choice that night was was superb. Um, I love your trunk, bro. I know I, I don't know if that's weird for another man to say not to another man, but your trunks are are on point. Especially not you. Black ones with the with the kanji on the back that just the other night, those were sick. Okay, Thanks. so now I'm getting that out of the way. The triple threat revolver. The one of the things that you that you mentioned earlier was the versatility that you have as a professional wrestler. And you've also, mm -hmm. I mean, I could see you as you know going over on moose. I can see you as the X Division champion. I can see you as the tag team champion. I can see see you holding all of those belts. Is there something for you, besides the, since you've been the X Division champion as a singles, is there another singles belt that you or you're like, whoa, I need that's my next uh, uh, goal. Well, since there's two of them floating around, I like to get a shot at the Impact World Title and the fucking TNA title because. Those are the two top dogs right now. And the TNA title has so much history behind it. Be like, fuck yeah, I want my name on that list too. So people could be like, when I die, be like, oh, Willie Mack had that. So to let me know that I actually did something. Well, I can see it's almost as if it writes itself, you and Swan. And you could do a whole thing together. I mean, I don't know, Petey, just, just throwing that out there since you might know people. But I mean- Make it it could only make too be, much sense. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be baby face and heel. You know what I mean? Hey, Lars, hey, how about how about this? How about a triple threat? With the impact, and I love how you bring up the TNA title because you're recognizing it as a title that Moose has been carrying. How that triple threat match with you three, that's man, like Lars, you were saying it writes itself. It does. I mean, I can even see, I don't know, if I was writing it, and I'm just throwing it out there, give one of you guys the X division, and then you do a, a triple threat match for the, 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 what do they call it? The triple crown. You got a triple crown of TNA oh. or Impact. I mean, come on, Petey, hire me. I'm not doing shit here at all. <laughs> that would be sweet. Let's do hey, it. Impact I mean, I title in the have an impact title on one hand, a TNA title, and the X right in the middle. Be like X. <laughs> Ooh, hey, do like Bobby Lashley did. Oh yeah, hell yeah, that's right. He did have all them belts at once too. So did uh, the Kurt Angle. I think he was the first one. Yeah, and he had to defend them all in in one night or something like that. And I think he lost 
like the tags and the X and stuff like yep. that. Yeah, he lost the tags. He lost the X to Jay Lethal, but he kept the world title against Sting at the at very end of the night. I don't see how the hell he had three matches. I, I don't, and you remember that. I worked for the company. I barely remember that. You remember it. <laughs> I'm a fan. I watch everything. I, I got to keep I, that shit up there. So, hey, speaking of fans, all right, I know, I know, uh, probably just like me, big Rob Van Dam fan, right? Growing up, probably. Yeah. yeah. So, and I, I remember you guys, your match uh, in Windsor. It was. A oh, yeah. Match. And I don't know. I thought he knocked you out at one point, man. You guys were really, you know, slugging up. What was it like? What did it mean to you to wrestle Rob? And like, what did you think of the match? That was my second time wrestling Rob because I wrestled him before in Cali at some company called PCW. And it was for the PCW Heavyweight Championship. And I'm like, damn, I remember fucking creating myself on the video games to play against Rob Van Damme. That's actually happening. (laughs) It felt good. Like he got all this shit in. I put my little tweaks on shit. And it felt good, except I fucking hurt one of my hurt my shoulder that's what it a was little bit. i remember yeah you came on yeah. you hard man i remember oh man and you were <laughs> that was like halfway through the match too you still had to get all through the match eh? i i give it to you willie hell of a match hey you gotta finish <laughs> hey willie has the business side of wrestling hurt your love for the business or are you still a fan and watch everything uh, well at one point, I stopped for a hot second because of the whole WWE thingy when I got released. But then after that, I'm like, fuck it. I ain't going to make nobody hate wrestling. So I kept watching and watching because I got friends and every company is weird. And I want to see what's happening, keep myself up to date in the loop so I'm not out of touch with shit. Well, now that you got, you know, the New Japan things happening, the AEW things happening, you know, here we are with this sort of uncharted territory to, in, a, in, a, in a manner of speaking, is there, is there guys in, in those, those promotions that you would like to get into the ring with now that you have the opportunity? Hell yeah, it's a bunch of people. I like to wrestle Shingo, because cool. Shingo was a match that I wanted when I went over to Dragon Gate, but I didn't know that was his last time in Dragon Gate before he went to New Japan. So hopefully we can run that match because I only wrestled in like a multi-man tag match. And the AEW, hmm, it's a few people I like to work with Cage again. Or take that back, Eddie Kingston. I have yet to wrestle that dude. And I've known him for so many years. I'm like, Eddie, when we going to have a match, man? I know you need to tell these promoters something. I'm like, I ain't got no pull, fool. You've been in the business longer than me. You should say something. They'll listen to you. you. All right, I guess I got to book that match too. Then, guys, you guys are putting oh. a lot of work on me right now. You know, <laughs> Make your good work. <laughs> I guess this just writes itself. I've ne- I've known Eddie for I don't know twenty years too, and I don't think I've ever wrestled him either. That's just that's odd. Like, in like for example, uh, Samoa Joe, right? Mm-hmm. You- division same time i was believe it or not i've never wrestled him in a singles match i've done tags i know it's it's shocking never wrestled him in a singles match mm-hmm. done multiple tags with them is there anybody that like you're shocked besides eddie kingston that you haven't wrestled that you're like oh man i'm i'm with them all the time and i've done tags and all this kind of stuff but never a, like a singles match Shit. eddie edwards really you know, yeah. I've never wrestled that Edwards. I've wrestled him in like the same thing, in like House of Hardcore in a three man match, but never that genuine one on one match. Okay. What about? Uh, have you ever wrestled uh, Sammy Callahan? Multiple one? times. Okay, I was wondering because he's wrestled everybody, and, mm-hmm. but I've never had a singles match with him ever. Are you so, almost done, Jason Kendall? What's that? Are you almost done, Jason Kindle? Sorry, we're, we're oh. reminiscing. I'm, I'm asking him about uh, his matchups and stuff. You, could... you go ahead, Dennis. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Turn my mic off now. Press mute. <laughs> you. Well, you've wrestled all around the world. And I know the world looks at us sometimes, as the Americans, as hillbillies of the world sometimes. But what do wrestling fans look as American wrestling fans like? Because I've always wondered this, and I almost had the chance to ask uh, 
Grado this, and I it slipped through my fingers. I didn't get the opportunity, but I always wondered what the the rest of the wrestling world looks at the American wrestling fans like. Hmm. I can't say I might hurt some people's feelings because there's some cool ones, oh, and then you got okay. them ones that'll stalk your ass and ask you some random out. It sounds good in their head, but when they it comes out, you hear it, you be like, the fuck did you say? <laughs> like that kind of shit like that. <laughs> but I'm trying to be nice to everybody because I'm, I don't know, I'm a nice dude. I'm too nice. <laughs> well, I mean, last time you were on the air or on the podcast, you gave out your gamer tag to to everybody. So, I mean, that is super nice. Mm-hmm. They be hitting me up. I got like a thousand friend requests, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Do you have a favorite guy that you wrestled, Willie? Like when it's just like because you wrestled so many times, or like you're always pushing new boundaries, or that would seem as there you got that yeah. guy when it comes up. It's actually a couple. It's Brian Cage is one. Yeah. And then another one I had some bangers up and down Cali with was too cold. I mean, uh, Scorpio Scott. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's all. So, so would it happen that like the more you get comfortable, then that's when you try and go, you know, like you said, oh, backflips working today. Let's try the corkscrew. Let's try this. Let's try that. Because your comfortability, that's unbelievable that you two guys that size. It's, Mm -hmm. it's crazy. I think it goes to show you how what great athletes you guys really are Not yeah because we go in there we're like all right we did this last time let's see if we could do a little bit different add a little bit more all right we have another match see what else we didn't do and then just fucking make it like kind of like the best ofs but push to the extremes and like it had the people feeling good and have us feeling good after, even though my black ass be sore because Brian Cage like to do a lot of lifting and throwing. I'm like, man, come on, I'm 285 pounds. I can't be going through this shit every time. <laughs> that, that, hey. That's good to hear, though. Hey, Willie, this is a non wrestling question. I'm just curious because I'm a, well, I ain't as big as I used to be when I played. And I used to love me some oxtail. I love soul food and stuff. So, what 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 what's your diet like? <laughs> well, right now I just got down on some fucking crumble donuts and some strawberry Nesquik. Hey, man. Yeah, I just see. I got on a seafood diet. I seafood and eat the shit. I don't care. I don't stick to nothing. It's like, all right, I'm gonna burn it off in the ring. I don't care. <laughs> That's my mentality when my when I played, but MLB wasn't trying to play that shit. <laughs> 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 hey, you looking like fucking Damian Wayans from the Great White Hype? Remember that motherfucker oh, had that belt? <laughs> You trying to embarrass me on the national team? Shit. Yep. Well, Dennis, you wanna? Well, I've, I've got tons of questions. I'm go, go. Let's jump in. All right. Well, listen. Is the gamer version of you? Because you and I are both video game fans. I grew up on WCW versus NWO and, you know, WrestleMania 2000 and all that stuff. I, those were the games where you really got in and could create yourself, the version of you or the character. And you had mentioned how you created yourself and you wrestled Rob Van Dam. Are you in the ring now like the wrestler version of you you wanted to create? Somewhat. So far, I was just waiting until I get older and can't do half the shit no more. But yeah, I'm pretty much I always create your player. Oh, I'm at a hundred stats. Hell yeah, a hundred uh, charisma, a hundred stamina, a hundred everything. I'm like, oh fuck yeah. So I'm pretty comfortable where I'm at right now. Uh, it, one more question, and then I'm gonna concede and let everybody else ask. <laughs> Are, did you are, have you always been Willie Mac, or did you have any gimmicks when you were running through the in, indie circuit? Well, I've always been Willie Mac, but except for like at this one spot called Lucha Bavoom, 
I was Willie Mac. They said, oh, you need a little flavor on your name or something like that. So they came up with Chocolate Caliente, which is hot chocolate in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had the fucking purple robe with the fuzzy boots and the purple shit. And I just went up there and shook my ass and did my thing and said, hey, tu quiero chocolate, mami. And just, yeah, it was fun uh-huh. as fuck. Uh, that's awesome, Guys, I mean, I got tons more questions, so jump in. I got, I got one last question. You had a pick with the peace sign in it. <laughs> yeah, I got that up on my shelf somewhere with my other Afro picks. I got a bunch of them, except for, like, when I go to Mexico, I got to take the plastic one because I think it's a weapon. I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do? Pick out the pilot's hair and make them look good? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's a comb. It's for your hair. <laughs> no, can't take it. Shit. <laughs> now I gotta go to a beauty shop or go on Amazon and buy them shits in bulk. Are are you? I did that before. <laughs> are you a memorabilia collector? Do you? Because as as a wrestling fan, once again, you know you get into the wrestling cards or the figures or even your know, personal memorabilia because you've been in the ring with some very notable guys. Are you a guy that kind of collects and and saves things? Yeah, like, I always collect a flyer or a ticket stub at an event that I'm at, and I have them sealed up in, like, a little Ziploc bag and put it away in the spot with all of them to remember my shit or what I did, because I know when I get old, I ain't going to remember half this stuff. Be like, look, look, here's what your daddy did back in 2021. Like, shit (laughs) like that. As a matter of fact, I got one of my homies masks that I wrestled you know, uh, Laredo kid. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got one of this badass mask. I'm gonna show it to you right now. Hold on. Yes, go All get right. it. Yeah. This is awesome. This, this is. Oh my god. <laughs> I just got this when I wrestled him out in uh, Odessa, Texas. It's a Laredo kid oh, slash La Parker mask. It's a tribute mask. This shit looks sick, Ooh, huh? Yeah. Oh wow. Wow. I don't know how you keep Dang. these damn things up. <laughs> hey. Have you thought about donning a mask maybe once for just a special pay-per-view to come out in? Oh, hell yeah, I want to, but I got this damn afro, so that shit will be kind of tough to get on. <laughs> Simba, what's your black ass want with your nosy ass? You see my nosy ass cat? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Simba. For for one match, I think it would be worth it because I us as fans we pop when wrestlers come out to a, a special kind of entrance or to to spice it up on a on a special pay per view maybe like a next Bound for Glory you got to come out with like some sort of luchador theme. Ah, uh, I might I got to just come up or see somebody if they got a good design for me to have maybe an open top mask or something because every pay per view if you know that'd be sick. Every yeah. pay per view, I always had the contacts and like the different gear, so we'll see what happens. You said open, yeah. open fro and open beard. Yeah, yeah, and then cover everything else. Yeah, come on, Petey. I like it. I mean, I, I don't know if I've ever seen a mask like that before. So okay. like a bas- like a basketball First. mask, you know, like they break the nose sort of, but it's all I out. Let the hair go. Yeah, yeah, like, like the anti-mask, like when Rey yeah. Mysterio and like yeah. hoping them got the mask, but they come out with a special interest mask and take it off. Yeah, Pat. let's make it. There's so many good ideas, Willie. I like, love it. Yeah. I, I don't know why you're not on the the, the booking team, the creative team. <laughs> I wanted to do a gimmick where, like, if I beat people, I'll be like a fucking race car driver. You know how I add sponsors? Yeah. Like you yeah. beat somebody, <laughs> take like a piece of their gear. And yeah. fucking have your gear be plain, but have a piece of there. So you just go around collecting people's shit until you like a chameleon, pretty much. Well, you know what, like you can Edie. do the you can do the whole mask thing, like you're talking about the race car driver. You just go beat up suicide, then you got a mask and you got a whole thing. You, you know can't I mean? beat up manic. suicide. Willie is suicide, guys. Come on. <laughs> well, you can always take it off <laughs> the top of the body. You know I mean, the body's a dead giveaway. Thanks hey. a lot, Petey. Spoiler. Thanks uh, a lot. <laughs> oh, Petey, Petey we, writing down everything. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm running out of paper, guys. <laughs> Damn. Well, one of, one of the things, one, my last question for you, Willie, um, 
because you know one of the things I loved about this podcast and I love now so much more about you is that we're all wrestling fans and it doesn't matter mm. what, where where we're all from doesn't matter we're all here because we love this thing professional wrestling and that's what makes me feel so special as a fan. So do you think, because we've had people on here who not necessarily, who weren't necessarily profess, professional wrestling fans. Do you think as a fan now being in the ring, that has helped you in any way? Yeah, because I knew what I liked and what I didn't like. And you look at the business totally different. Like when you step in there, just like your music, you go out there and you're doing it. And since you are part of it, now you understand, all right, this is what I need to do look at the clock, see how much time I got left in the set, shit like that. So it makes you appreciate everything, like all them long ass taping days, like once we get it done with, it's like, fuck yeah, I accomplished it. I can't wait to see it on TV and you critique your shit and you be like, I could have did this better. Or this look kind of slower. No, nah, that looked pretty nice. Like it's always good to have that to look back at. You, uh, we talked about this at the beginning. Dimitri's made a, uh, a, a talk about this a little bit was once again, Mac Stryker's reference to you and Dimitri Young. Did you, when that first happened, did you ever really catch it? Did you have to look up who Dimitri was? Cause I don't know if you're a sports fan or not. And the fact that he's sitting here now, and even on this last set of tapings where Stryker threw out the old, you know, he's a mixture of Dimitri Young and, uh, you know, Junkyard dog. Junkyard dog. So, so now being here and actually finally getting to meet one of the guys you're compared to, does it kind of click? Yeah, it kind of does because I'll be honest, when Stryker told me this shit and said, I'm like, the fuck? Dimitri Young put out the Google machine and was like, oh, okay, baseball player. Okay. Oh, any black? Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I and, and I'm just and I'm just as athletic as you are. I can't do the backflips and all that shit. You're but not. I was a big guy, and I used to run fast, hit the ball hard, and I used to smile like how you how you smiling now. So I, I'm, <laughs> this is this is you in the future right here. You're gonna cut that hat off because your beard gonna, your beard gonna become chrome. It's gonna be chrome, not silver. That's the old people. Our stuff is chrome because we grew up in the chrome generation. You're gonna cut your hair a little bit, keep it nice and neat. And maybe. Yeah, I still eat the same shit though. Yeah, maybe my hair getting there. Fucking, I might have that grown ass man haircut in a minute, looking like Kimbo Slice or George Jefferson and shit. Kimbo. Oh no, you didn't say George Jefferson. <laughs> hey, I'll be, I'll be walking up in that motherfucker like, oh, I'm gonna fuck with the cul-de-sac. <laughs> the cul-de-sac. They got that, uh, got that fryer tuck haircut. <laughs> I got I got one last question, Willie, and this is uh do you have a plan? Sometimes I just said guys are like, I got five years left or ten years. Do you have you know, like you said, do you have a goal to wrestle in mind or just as long as it's uh your body's able to, you're gonna be out there because you love it? Well, as long as I'm able to, because I'll be this is a inside secret that I've been telling myself every year I said I was going to quit. Mm. Like, I was like, all right, when I turn 30, I'm stopping. 30 came, hey, you want to do this show? All right, fuck it. You want to be, oh, oh you want to go to Japan? All right, cool. Hey, you want to sign this contract for a few years? Shit. All right. <laughs> and it's like, I'm still around in this motherfucker. So we'll see what happens. Run around like Ric Flair, all flabby and shit, still trying to do some oh, flips. Shit. Yeah, hey. but bro, you could pull it off because you got that 100 charisma, bro. That's not the video game. That's the real person. It's been absolute pleasure, bro. Lars, hey. hang, hang on, Lars. Uh, for everybody at home, uh, the show will end here in a minute. For us, we're going to hang out and talk. But Lars, hey. really, Lars made a a choice to move around his day to be here for this interview because you're one of his favorite people. And A, I want Lars to wrap the show up. B, I want Lars to have the last few minutes with you because uh, it, it really was touching for me on what Lars had to do to be here tonight. And the fact that Lars only got a couple questions in, I want to make sure 
that this last few minutes is with Lars and Willie. So Lars, now that you like, singled me out, and I and I and, and and I don't have any more questions for him, I feel like an asshole. Well, just talk to him. Say <laughs> hi. Introduce yourself. Hi, Willie. How you doing? Listen, the only thing I, I, that, I, that I ask is, is that if you ever get rid of those pink and black trunks that you wear the other night, that, that my name are on them. Oh, all right. I'll see what's up. I can get maybe, some more maybe, maybe we can make a trade or something like that. Oh, cool. Shit. Hell yeah. Because fucking, I can't wait till everything open back up and hopefully I can see you again in concert because that shit was fun. It was you guys and Iron Lincoln and some shit like that and Pennywise. Great. Yeah, that yeah, shit yeah. was yep. fun. See so, my black ass in the mosh pit all dressed nice, and they was up there like, fuck yeah. And I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. I'm like, don't step on the <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you live, I mean, I don't know if we can air that, but do you live in Vegas? Yeah, I am living in Vegas right now. I've been here for seven years. Yeah, seven going on eight years. Because it's well, a lot time, cheaper than LA. Well, next time we come through, bro, you don't have to be out in the pit unless you want to. Oh, fuck yeah. I get down and dirty. I don't care. Well, no, but we got to at least meet and hang out. You know what I mean? Oh, hell yeah, for sure. Cool. Hey, 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 let me know when you when, when this all clears up so you won't be the only brother in the mosh pit. You know what, Dimitri, you're invited. Listen, listen, Vegas ain't that far away from you. We can, You know what? Oh, I'll drive I'll, that. I'll tell you what. I'll rent a car, and I'll pick you two up, and we'll drive to the show together. Oh shit! Wow. Hey, yeah. I'm down. I and clear up well, my schedule. I, I guess I've been on a mosh pit since I was 18. Listen, <laughs> I guess I'll have to fly into Vegas there to make sure you guys can take care of yourselves. But hey. uh, I've been in one or two thousand mosh pits in my day. I'm willing to get the boots back out if you need them. Yep. Hell yeah. If you're, if you're free with your busy schedule, you know, giving the Canadian destroyer to somebody or something, if you can, you know, come on out, visit us. Dennis, you know what I mean? You're always invited, but you're the last one I'm going to invite. <laughs> just kidding. But Dennis, oh, yeah. Getting Dennis. down in all those pits, fucking body count pits, tech nine pits, ICP oh, pits, yeah. fucking twisted cottonmouth kings. I was like, oh, hell yeah. Come on. The, one of the body, I went into, I saw body count, went into, that was one of the most, I mean, I've, I've been in some gnarly pits in my life, okay? You know, that's kind of where, that's where all the aggression is. It's kind of, you know, that's where the energy is, is right there in the center, you know what I mean? And it's also a family atmosphere, so... In that sense, well, yeah, it's freaking violent, but if you fall down, someone's there to pick oh, you up. Hell yeah. And even if you get punched in the face, it's not beef, right? It's just, it is just is what it is. <laughs> but mm -hmm. body count, I swear to God, I thought I was going to die. And I was like, I, at that time, you know, I was young. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I was, uh, you know, I'm still pretty virile, but my point is, I was like 20 or something like that. And I was in there and I was just like, oh my God, I'm going to get killed right now because just of the insanity, you know? Cause that, I mean, that's, that's, that band just pissed everybody off. And that was, you know, they were punker than shit. I'm sorry, but that, that band was next level. You know what I mean? I got lucky to see them at the key club when they did like a reunion show or some yeah. shit. Yep. Yeah. 2004, I think it was. Yeah, I was uh, just right out of high school. Well, see, I saw Ice, Ice T, my friend Wade Mendoza, he had two turntables and a microphone, you know, he was into that stuff. And he turned me on to all the rap music. And I went and saw Ice T, The Egyptian Lover, African Bombada, and The Soul Sonic Force, and Ooh. Houdini. And it was all at one show, at okay. one step beyond in Santa Clara. I was the only white kid in the audience, and I had a blast. You know what I mean? It was like, I mean, it, it wasn't about that. It was about the music. And that's what I, why I always took to hip hop too, because, you know, it was punk rock. It was just, you know, you know, if you listen to, this, you know, the, the Sugar Hill Gang and all that stuff. And I know I'm dating the fuck out of myself right now. But the, <laughs> the first, the first, we all old. The, for the first political song of the 80s was a, was, a, was a hip hop song. You know what I mean? So I don't know. That's, that's a whole other um, podcast. Another crazy ass pit was when I was at a three six mafia concert. I was like, "What? <laughs> three six mafia had one? Yeah, they ended that. 
they had pits like we got to start a mosh pit up in this bit, start a pit. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> Whoa. I got well, wow. any, street music is street music. You know, what I mean, if it comes from that place, if you come from that place, you identify with it. It doesn't, it 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 crosses all boundaries, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? That's what I love about music. It's like Aretha Franklin is just as street as the clash, who's just as street as Run DMC, who's just as street as any, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it doesn't like, matter. It's like wrestling too. You exactly. know, the true, the, the true, the true, like, like Willie, like everything about his guy, right? Is the genuine real deal of what he is. Whereas opposed, you know, like we had, uh, we interviewed MJF. That was a treat. You know, oh, yeah. so, so, so that was, a, that was, a, that was a treat, right, Dennis? That oh, didn't get to talk the whole time. <laughs> he told me to shut up. But, but that's but that's the beauty, right? Where you understand that that's music at its two alternatives, wrestling at its two alternatives, but yet the message really is the same, mm -hmm. you know, in a lot of the ways. So that's that's the cool thing that we can all like back to what Lars said about us all, you know, being brought together through wrestling. It's awesome to see that you love it. And, and something that got you through the toughest times in your life, now you're giving back to us through it. It's like a vessel. It's really cool, man. Shit, really. that's what I'm trying to do because it's like somebody could be like lost their job, laid on rent, somebody in the hospital or some shit. As long as you're in the arena in my presence while I'm out there doing my match, I don't want you to think about shit else but what I'm doing. So when you leave the show and go back to the real world, be like, fuck, that match was fucking good. And if I did that, I did my job. And that's what I'm about here to do to entertain folks. Uh, amen, bro. While well, you do, my eyes. <clears throat> yeah. Largely really? send oh. us home. Well, you know, you set us home, man. I, I'm, I'm, dude, I'm. Okay. Uh, I'll do it. Well, yes, Pete. No, I was just going to say. <laughs> If, if nobody was going to send him home or whatever, but Willie, uh, I just want you to know, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, it's a, a real treat. It's guys like you, man. You're one of the guys that just makes me love my job and want to go to work all the time and see in the locker room. Uh, oh shit. You're one of those guys, you know what I'm saying, man, ever since day one, but uh, where, uh, where can people find you on social media and stuff like that? Shirts and all that. Oh, hit me up. Willie underscore Mac on Instagram and Twitter. Willie Mac official is my Facebook fan page. And what else I got? Oh, pro wrestling tees. Willie Mac, buy my shit so I can feed these cats. You see this uh, motherfucker right here? I got yeah, you. I got to feed his ass. I got cats, I'm buy, I'm a dragon, and a turtle. So I'm go ahead and do that shit. And thank y'all for having me on. Well, for everybody on the podcast, it's over. For everybody here doing it, uh, we're going to hit stop and we're going to geek out over Willie Mac for a few minutes before we <laughs> go home. So uh, good night and goodbye. <laughs>